The sky is not the limit for the burgeoning space technology relations between the world's largest democracies, India and the United States. Speaking to NDTV science editor Pallav Bagla in an exclusive interview, Eric Garcetti, the U.S. ambassador to India, says the stars are aligning. Listen in for many more details. Indo-U.S. relations in general and in space technology are burgeoning. I have with me Ambassador Eric Garcetti, a space buff. Whenever India and America have worked together in space technology, the world's largest democracy and the world's oldest democracy have created magic. 1963, Nike Apache, India's first rocket came from America. Cut to 2008, Chandrayaan-1, the discovery of the presence of water molecules on the moon, came from a NASA-ISRO joint mission. And now, very soon, an Indian astronaut or Gaganyatri will go to the International Space Station. All happening because of the leadership of Ambassador Garcetti. Ambassador Garcetti, thanks for speaking to NDTV. Are the Indo-US relations heading into a new orbit? No question. And it used to be that we said that when it came to the United States and India, the sky was the limit. Today, we're going beyond the sky to the stars together, doing historic work together and learning from one another so we can learn more about our earth and our heavens as one. We've been so impressed to see how far India has come just in the last year with the moon mission, what's coming soon with astronauts in space. And facilitating that was a key part of when President Biden hosted Prime Minister Modi last year in Washington, not only the signing of the Artemis Accords, but also saying that we would bring an Indian astronaut into space this year. Whether it's the Aperture um, work that we're doing together to look with an Aperture satellite at the work that we're doing here on Earth with climate change, or whether it's looking at cheaper and better and more secure ways, I say that India, when it comes to space, has the technology, has the techniques, and also has the talent to change our heavens and affect our Earth together. So NASA, ISRO, going to explore the universe together? Absolutely. We're like buddies in a space movie. I think we love the idea of working two democracies, the two largest democracies, you said, but with the same vision of a peaceful uh, space, space that can be used in a way that can help uh, us here on Earth, uh, using technology for positive things like combating climate change and adapting to the extreme weather events that we're seeing, and also just knowing more. We think this is a quest for knowledge as well as a quest for peace together, and we're a perfect match when it comes to space. Now, we have the NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar, the NISAR satellite, yep. which I call the Nisarga satellite, yes, yes. and it's considered one of the single most expensive Earth imaging civilian satellites costing $1.2 billion plus. How will it help monitor climate change and how do you see this is the first time NASA and ISRO are jointly making a satellite? Absolutely. You know, it is so exciting to see this satellite, which will go up this year. We're on schedule to make that happen. It's kind of like when we go to the doctor and we check our height, our weight, our blood pressure, our pulse. This will do this for the Earth. It's almost like being able to have a doctor in space to check on our temperatures, on the oceans and the ocean levels, to look at what's happening with everything from wind to sunlight, and to be able to see what is happening with climate change. We know here in India, over 800 million people are vulnerable when it comes to climate change. Just in the last month, we broke a record in Delhi with 127 degrees, over 50 degrees Celsius, and also with record rain. And right now as we speak, people are feeling this every single day. And if we can put a satellite up there that our scientists can then look with richer, better data, we can save lives and we can help adapt to what's happening. What about the astronaut mission? Are you looking forward to have an Indian astronaut at the International Space Station? We can't wait, and we are on track to do that shortly. NASA will begin some of the training of an Indian astronaut. We are so excited that this offer made, by the way, just a year ago, will come to fruition in, we think, less than 18 months from that promise. Lovely. We also have an Indian origin astronaut, even as we speak up in, this, yes. in the heavens in, at the space station, astronaut Sunita Williams. Some say she is stranded there. What's happening? Any message for 
astronaut Sunita Williams and for the Indian people, Indians love her. Oh, I think she's pretty excited to have a few extra days up there. <laughs> the, the, I think it's been misreported that it's stranded. They are ready to be able to return, to spending some time looking and learning more from the mission that they're on. Um, and even tonight, we're, I think, going to enjoy uh, something special from her for this celebration of our National Day. But she really represents that bridge between the U.S. and India. Whether it's CEOs, whether it's university presidents, uh, whether it's astronauts, Americans of Indian origin are making America and the world a better, richer, deeper place with their brilliance. I was there in the White House when Prime Minister Modi had all these fancy tech CEOs from India and the U.S. As soon as the meeting broke up, he went to the far end of the table to say hi to Sunita Williams. He said, you're the superstar. So the superstar blessing Indo-U.S. relations? No question. She's not only blessing us from the heavens as we speak, but she knows that she has compatriots getting ready just behind her. Indian-American children that today dream of going up in space. And here in India, that's a dream now too that Indian children can have in their own country for the future. Some words in Hindi from you? You learned Hindi? Sure. I think sometimes I say, alag desh, alag rivaj. You know, different country, a different custom. But I think now it's maybe, uh, do desh, ek. Deal. One heart, two countries coming together. So, do desh, ek dil. Or antariksh mein, in space, together. Is that the future? Absolutely. I think we can't go alone. None of us can. And India and the United States are stronger together. So, together to inhabit the moon and Mars at some point? To infinity and beyond. So, that was Ambassador Eric Garcetti the U.S. ambassador to India, telling us, do dil ek jaan, or antariksh mein dono saath saath. Indo-U.S. relations are taking on a new high, especially in space technology. There is a new happy orbit between India and America. With camera person, Azum Siddiqui, in New Delhi, Palla Bagla for NDTV.